Good morning, y'all. As the snow keeps coming down, I'll keep on taking you to more southern latitudes. Although while Botswana as a name sounds more exciting than South Africa, it is exciting but not even close to as exciting as South Africa is, even though I'll have more stories to tell. Botswana is kind of a dry county, savanna type, right by Kalahari Desert. You don't necessarily need malaria medication unless you go up north. Uh, so I did stay down in Khaborone, um, the capital town of Botswana. To anybody who's ever taken malaria medicine ever, you'll know that it's pretty expensive for the wallet, but it also is expensive for the mind and for the body. So if you can avoid it. Now I entered Botswana from uh, by plane from Joburg, South Africa. No. And... Uh, you know, let's face it, I bought shitloads of wine in South Africa. So I figured, how am I gonna smuggle this crap into Botswana? I went into the, you know, customs agency, I just stamped my passport and all that. And they asked me, so did you bring any souvenirs? And I said, quite arrogantly, nah, you know, South Africa, it's kind of white. It's not that exotic, actually. Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm saving all my luggage space for Botswana and goods. And they said, oh, okay. And they just stepped me in and I was ready to go. So my hotel was outside of the uh, city walls, if you will. And it was this sort of hotel campus. And I suppose a lot of people went there for conferences, business conferences. They had conference um, facilities, all kinds of stuff. And a, rest a few restaurants in the middle. And uh, the fact that you had lots of businessmen in that campus it meant also that you had bar girls in the campus. Now, bar girl is another name for prostitute. So if you went into the restaurant, you would see a lot of nice looking girls in skimpy dresses just sitting there sipping on the same tea or the same drink for hours on end. Looking very lonely. You know when you always had a, like a counter next to your bed and you have a Bible inside? You also had a pack of condoms. Bar girls, businessmen, and then Botswana, which has a lot of HIV. That was pretty responsible of the hotel staff, I guess. So this one time at the restaurant, the waiter came up to me and said, Oh, there's a gentleman who is wondering if you would like to join him. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure in the male world is that supposed to be flattering. In a diplomatic way, I said, fuck no. But the thing is, I felt bad because now I'm like giving that message to the waiter and he has to go back and tell that guy. It's like a... That's not his job. Seriously, if you want to invite me to your table, then come up to me and invite me to your table. Don't send some messenger who is not a messenger whose job is actually something completely different. So I went into town, I had to take a, grab a taxi. I got a bunch of taxi numbers because they didn't really seem to have many listed taxis. It was just like you call somebody who drives their car as a taxi. And uh, they took me into town and dropped me off and it wasn't expensive. Can't remember how much it was, but it was not expensive. I walked around in town, which is like the calmest place on earth. Like if I walked around there naked and decided to lay down and sleep in the middle of the street, nobody's gonna touch me. There was like a square in the middle of town and they sold, it was like a marketplace, they sold everything from, from food to groceries, commodities to handicraft to everything. And I sort of wanted to buy like a little bit of everything, but you know, I already had all that wine in my suitcase so I just couldn't pack up my luggage like that. I went to this sort of mall and found myself at a clothing store and then I kind of got lost on the way out. I came out another way than I had gone into the mall and I was sort of lost and a woman came out and I recognized her. She had been at the clothing store and she came out and asked me if I was lost. Like what are you looking for? She was really curious in a very like positive like a genuine way and she was tall and skinny and she looked like a supermodel she was so elegant and her name is elizabeth so liz it turned out was the owner of the store liz was a real businesswoman she went off to all kinds of countries uh to 
buy clothes, bring them, you know, import them into Botswana and sell them in her stores. And she was ready to take me around in Botswana. Just like that, like, hey, what are you doing here? Well, I have some free time, you wanna hang? Through her I met another gorgeous friend. Like, the girls in Botswana are amazingly gorgeous. It's like the Ukraine of Africa. Her name was Emelda. And uh, we hung, we hung out at Emelda's apartment. It was like, so I got to see how people lived. It was super cool. And uh, to be honest, I mean, we even went to this party um, all together, all three of us. So I got to go club hopping in Botswana, in Caborone. Uh, you sort of needed to drive outside to get to like the downtown, downtown wasn't very active during the night. In fact, they sort of, they turned off all the street lights and it became like super dark. Uh, I got trapped there one day <clears throat> and I was like, okay, shit, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Like I had to find a taxi to get back to my hotel. Ha! <laughs> and then I finally found a street with had, which had lighting and one person and I could ask them like, where's the taxi? Where's the taxi stand? So anyways, we drove off with, with um, Liz and Amelda to another place which had shopping malls obviously closed in the night but also like restaurant life and we we parted there and uh, that was real nice um i have to say life there is much more modern than the way alexander mccall smith describes it in his books i think he's sort of stuck in his own time or something we hung out we got to be friends um uh, I got to hear about their Tinder problems. Yeah, they sort of had Tinder problems and this was 2008, so ahead of time, I tell you. So as a tourist, what can you do in Botswana? Well, there's lots to see. It's a sort of ancient place. They have a long history and they have these cave paintings from, you know, pre-Jesus times, way pre-Jesus times. And I went on one of those trips to have a driver drive me around and and see the countryside and uh, for one person it was a, a bit expensive but it was fine it was like when in Rome when in when in Africa right so I was driven to all these remote locations uh, where I got to see rock formations and I got to go into handicraft store and see um, handicraft art and all that uh, which was pretty cool we stopped in some villages as well and I took some pictures with uh, some like schoolgirls who were keen to know what Finnish men were like. I tried having my driver take a photo of us, but he wasn't very good with the camera. So at the end of the journey, when it was time to go home, I realized I didn't have a plan for roading out all of that South African wine I had bought. And I thought, oh, scheiße. What am I gonna do now? Now I have to smuggle, re-smuggle this out of... Uh, Botswana borders. Uh, obviously where they checked their bags they had a scale right next to them and they were weighing all the bags, the luggage, and uh, the scale always showed the previous bags. Um, it sort of latched on to the previous bags uh, weight which in my case was 16.5 kilos. So it became my turn and I put up my bag there pretending it wasn't that heavy at all. <laughs> yeah, um, great. <laughs> And the scale didn't move. It just said 16.5. I think, you know, maybe that guy didn't just sat there checking in bags and reset it. And I thought, holy crap, what if this guy doesn't notice? And he didn't notice. He was just 16.5. Mm, the guy was half asleep anyways. He probably, you know, missed his coffee break or something. And was eager to get home. But, wow. If there was ever a touch of God, that was it. Kind of. 